in 1971. Though throughout the years, the country has struggled to stand on its own two feet, enduring famine, military coups, and political assassinations. But how different is daily life for the Bangladeshi people today? Bangladesh is small, roughly the size of Iowa, with a population of nearly 160 million. This makes it one of the most densely populated countries in the world. But the people of Bangladesh have much more to contend with than just overcrowding. Much of the country sits on a delta that forms a part of the Bay of Bengal, making it susceptible to cyclones, river erosion, and other natural disasters, especially in rural areas. This is why today, Bangladesh is seeing so many of its rural population migrate to urban centers like Dhaka City which is actually creating a significant housing shortage. Though some upper-class Bangladeshis live in sturdy cement and brick homes, newcomers tend to settle for one-bedroom homes made of straw, bamboo, or worse. Many sleep in abandoned buildings, bus stations, or even on street corners. When it comes to education, Bangladesh is not well-developed either. Literacy rates are significantly low, and dropout rates or grade repetition is considerably high. This is due to a number of factors. In addition to overcrowding in schools, financial concerns also come into play. Education is expensive and many students are expected to drop out to provide for their parents. Financial struggles are also one of the many reasons why more than half of all girls under 18 have arranged marriages. Outside of cultural and religious beliefs, parents support the idea of arranging marriages for their daughters because they feel it gives them security, protects them from sexual harassment and ultimately prevents them from starving. My parents couldn't feed me, so they decided to get me married. I had no choice, one 14-year-old bride explained. But if marriage isn't an option, many children enter the workforce. The labor law of Bangladesh sets the minimum legal age for employment at 14. However, 93% of child laborers work illegally in small factories and home-based businesses. This amounts to more than 3 million children working as early as age 5. As expected, there are significant dangers with child labor. One documentary got an inside look in a typical garment factory and found staff as young as 13 being kicked, slapped, and hit with a used fabric roll as well as abused with physical threats and insults. When asked why underage laborers would endure such harsh conditions, one young garment worker simply stated, we have to work to eat. These conditions are similar, if not worse, for adult workers who typically work 16-hour days in these factories. And if Bangladeshis aren't working in these factories, they're most likely trying to earn a living through agriculture, which is also mired in difficulty. Its location on the delta, coupled with the challenges brought forth by climate change, means their arable lands experience frequent river floods and cyclones, which ruin crops. Bangladeshi's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina states, For my country, Bangladesh, the goal of combating climate change and its impacts is crucial as we are on the front line of this global threat. However, despite its rough history, Bangladesh is advancing. Extreme poverty has been cut significantly since the 1990s, and the maternal mortality rate has lowered. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has even set ambitious goals to be recognized as a middle-income country by 2021. Though she realizes the journey may be tough, she appears resolute, recently stating that we have a long way to go. We have to do more. When I have been able to establish this country as a poverty-free country, a hungry-free country, a developed country, perhaps at that time, perhaps then, I may say I am proud. So that's life in Bangladesh. But if you want to learn more about its massive neighbor, India, and other countries, click